हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर स्वाति शिरडकर आई एम प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ओबीजीवाई इन एम जी एम मेडिकल कॉलेज औरंगाबाद टुडे इन वीडियोज वी आर गोइंग टू सी द फीमेल पेलवीस द क्लिनिकल असेसमेंट ऑफ फीमेल पेलवीस एंड फिटलेस कल हेलो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी अबाउट द फीमेल पेलवीस फ्रॉम ऑप्सटिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ओके सो फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट वी विल बी सींग द वेरियस पार्ट्स ऑफ द पेलवीस द वेरियस जॉइंट्स ऑफ द पेलवीस डायमीटर्स प्लेन्स एंड इट्स ऑप्सटिक्स इम्पॉर्टेंस ओके सो देर आर वेरियस बोन्स by which this pelvis is formed these two are ilial bones these two are pubic bones this is the sacrum this is the sacrum these two are ischial bones these two are ischial bones and this is the coccyx so these are the components of a female pelvis and this various bones they are joined by various joints two pubic bones they are joined to form pubic symphysis this is sacrum in the midline and two ilial bones are joined to the sacrum by sacroiliac joints the coccyx is joined to the sacrum by sacrococcygeal joint this pubic symphysis is a cartilaginous joint and other three they are synovial joints even though they are synovial joints the movement at sacroiliac joint is minimal okay so this is about the components of the bone components of the pelvis and its joints while we are describing this pelvis we are supposed to know various landmarks as well okay as this is a ilial bone this is called as a anterior superior iliac spine this is the anterior inferior iliac spine these are pubic tubercles or pubic eminences okay so while we are holding the pelvis for the description we have to hold it in a anatomical position that is the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic bone pubic tubercle they are in one vertical plane okay second rule is while we are holding the pelvis we will as far as possible we will not be inserting our fingers inside because we have to treat this pelvis as a dynamic pelvis how to hold it then you can see that you can hold the pelvis with the help of the spine and the acetabulum okay now we will start describing describing this pelvis you can see this portion this is called as pelvic inlet okay this is bounded by the ilial bone pubic bone and sacrum how to describe this inlet it starts from the upper border of superior pubic crest superior pubic ramus ilio pectineal line the sacroiliac joint ally of the sacrum and sacral promontory same on this joint same on this side okay so this is called as pelvic inlet this pelvic inlet divides the pelvis in the false pelvis and true pelvis the part above this inlet is called as false pelvis why it is called as false is it not existing it exists but anteriorly there is no bony landmark while for the true pelvis that is below this inlet you can see anteriorly there is pubic symphysis posteriorly there is sacrum and laterally there are ilial and ischial bones so this is a false pelvis this is a true pelvis today we are going to see the obstetric significance of the pelvis that is why we will be describing the true pelvis 
I have just now described the inlet, how to describe this inlet. Okay. What else we should know about the inlet is what are the diameters. You can see being a gynecoid pelvis, the inlet is having elliptical shape. This elliptical shape is having the anterior posterior diameter which is named as a conjugate. There are two types of conjugates at this level. One is the anatomical conjugate which considers the midpoints according to the anatomical planes. That is the midpoint of the sacral promontory to midpoint you can see there is a thickness to this pubic symphysis superiorly. If this thickness is like one finger, you can see that you have to consider the midpoint over here. And you can see the inner border is 0.5 centimeter inside. Okay. So, from midpoint of the sacral promontory to midpoint of the superior pubic crest is anatomical conjugate. But this much area of 0.5 centimeter is not available to the baby while the head of baby is passing through and that is why we have to consider the obstetrical conjugate that is from midpoint of the sacral promontory to you can see this is the inner margin of the superior pubic crest. So, it is a midpoint of this inner margin of the pubic crest. This will be the obstetrical conjugate. Okay. But can we measure these, conjug these conjugates while patient is in labor? No, we cannot. That is why there is a concept of third conjugate which is called as a diagonal conjugate. It goes from the inferior portion of the pubic symphysis to the sacral promontory. So, it crosses two bones, two planes that is the plane of outlet and comes to the plane of inlet which is called as a diagonal conjugate. Okay. Now, there are two oblique diameters. One diameter starts from the right sacroiliac joint goes to the left pubic eminence. One starts from the left sacroiliac joint goes to the right pubic eminence. Okay. So, these two are oblique diameters of the inlet. Now, there is one transverse diameter of the inlet. This transverse diameter is the maximum separation between iliopectineal lines and it will change according to the shape of the pelvis. Okay. One more thing we will like to know is what are the values of these diameters. The anatomical conjugate is 11.5 centimeter, the obstetrical conjugate is 11 centimeters, the oblique diameters they are 12 centimeters and the transverse diameter is 13 centimeters. The diagonal conjugate will be definitely more, we will have to add this length of the pubic symphysis that is almost 2 centimeters. Okay. Now, one more concept we will understand is the axis of the inlet. The axis is a line which is perpendicular to the plane of inlet. Now, what is plane of inlet? The plane which passes to through these two points, the sacral promontory to the pubic symphysis. This is the plane of inlet and the axis is a line which is perpendicular to the plane of inlet. So, it goes downwards and posteriorly. One more concept about this inlet is the angle of inclination. What is this angle of inclination? This is the plane of inlet. If we extend this plane to the horizontal, it will make some axis with the horizontal. This is called as a angle with the horizontal. So, if you extend this plane downwards, it will make some angle with the horizontal. This angle which is made with the horizontal is called as angle of inclination. We will be learning what is its significance later on. So, we have seen what are the boundaries of inlet, what are the diameters, 
what are their values, what is the axis, what is the direction of the axis and what is the angle of inclination. Now we will be moving towards the outlet of the pelvis. This outlet of the pelvis anatomically will be bounded anteriorly by inferior margin of the pubic symphysis, then the ischial tuberosities and the tip of coccyx. But if you can see the tip of coccyx, it can move backwards while the head of the baby is passing, while the tip of sacrum it will be fixed, it will not move. So naturally the tip of sacrum is the fixed point. Similarly, if you can see these are the ischial tuberosities, the distance between two ischial tuberosities is more than the distance between two ischial spines. These are the ischial spines and that is why again there is a concept of anatomical outlet and obstetrical outlet. The anatomical outlet as I have described the inferior margin of pubic symphysis, the two ischial tuberosities and the tip of coccyx. But the obstetrical outlet is anteriorly remaining same that is inferior margin of the pubic symphysis but laterally it is two ischial spines and posteriorly it is tip of the coccyx, uh, tip of the sacrum. Okay? Now what are the diameters? The AP diameter of obstetrical outlet is between tip of the sacrum to inferior point of the pubic symphysis and it is 11 centimeters while the distance between two ischial spines is 10 centimeters. Laterally there are no bony landmarks that is why there is no lateral diameter. Okay? Now what is cavity of the pelvis? The cavity of the pelvis is bound superiorly by plane of inlet and inferiorly by plane of obstetrical outlet or plane of least pelvic dimensions. Why? Because the dimension between two ischial spines is just 10 centimeter. Okay? So between the area is called as cavity of the true pelvis. Shape of this cavity is cylindrical and because it is a cylinder all diameters are same. We can just measure one diameter and it is enough. What is diame that diameter is between the second and third sacral vertebra, midpoint of between second and third sacral vertebra, anteriorly it is midpoint of the you can see over here. This is the inner surface of the pubic symphysis. You can see the midpoint of inner surface of the pubic symphysis. So anteriorly it is a midpoint of pubic symphysis inner surface and posteriorly it is midpoint of second and third sacral vertebra over here. You can see over here. This is the anterior posterior diameter of the cavity and it is 12 centimeter. Being cylinder all the diameters are 12 centimeter. Coming back to axis, the axis of inlet as I told you is pointing backwards and downwards while axis of the cavity is pointing directly downwards while the, the axis of the outlet is pointing downwards and forwards. So this J shape will mark journey of the baby through pelvis and the angle of inclination will change the axis and it will disturb the journey of the baby. One more thing we are going to know is about the subpubic angle. This subpubic angle needs to be wide. If this angle is narrow then what will happen while the head is coming through the pelvis you can see that head has to accommodate beneath the pubic symphysis. Now if this angle is narrow then what will happen 
the head will not be able to accommodate over here and the place the space will be wasted. This space between the occiput when it is coming to the perineum to the inferior part of the pubic symphysis this is called as a dead space of Morris. The this, this dead space of Morris will increase if this angle is narrow or it the angle is not wide. You can see now at present it is a wide angle. If this angle is narrow less than 90 then the dead space of Morris will increase. Okay? So, these were the few points which you should know about the pelvis or the anatomical aspects of the pelvis. How to measure adequacy of the pelvis we are going to see in next video.